The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. church i hope you're having a blessed day today today is a very exciting day it's every day is a very exciting day when we study the word of god and today we're in walking in purpose part number three we're dealing with god's counsel we're dealing with god's counsel this is a subject we've talked about many different times throughout the the start of the from the start of this ministry until now especially when we started dealing with the fullness of god we even had teachings called the Eternal Council of the Godhead. Uh, that's a part, that's actually a Sunday sermon. It's an entire week series on the Eternal Council of the Godhead. And it's an important one to go and study, which is really dealing with God's eternal purpose and plan for mankind, for the earth, for all of all of creation. And today I want to look at 1 Kings 17, and I really want to go to a passage in the book of Isaiah, and I want to unveil some truths dealing with God's counsel, some underlying things, because we talk about walking in purpose. It's all about these undergirding truths that uphold us walking in our purpose to where we can remain faithful until the end, where we can finish the race. We can as Jesus said on the cross, say it is finished. We can go all the way with God, even unto death, if that's what it takes. But a lot of this refers to we need to understand not only God's counsel, but God's counsel producing obedience inside of our heart. And we're going to take some time to look at it today. It's going to be a very exciting lesson. But I do want to give one announcement. We did have our divine purpose curriculum last night we did the first lesson called divine purpose topic one is divine purpose and what we're going to talk about today is actually a part of the additional resources out of that curriculum because the lord was speaking to me on some fundamental truths that undergird the ability to walk out your divine purpose and that's what we're going to look at today because i think it will uphold us in walking in purpose is understanding the truth that we're going to talk about today so please make sure if you're a part of any of our classes you've been keeping up with the classes we did send an email out last night so please make sure you respond to the email and if you need anything at all please reach out to us if you would like to take any of our discipleship classes when you buy the curriculum so you go on and you click purchase and you buy the curriculum it will auto enroll you in the class so you automatically get enrolled in the class. So we want to make sure that you are getting the curriculums, getting enrolled in the classes, and participating with us. 
So we're going to jump right in today. I'm going to pray and then we're going to get started. We're going to look at 1 Kings 17. So Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let this word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Conforming us to the image of Christ. Growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, let's start by doing this. We're going to read through 1 Kings 17. We're going to read the first 10 verses. And then we are going to jump right into the book of Isaiah. So, and Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water to vessel that I may drink. And then that leads into the story of Zarephath. And if you know, we've made this transition from provision and obedience to talking about walking in purpose. And you may say, Cody, well, what, what is the difference in the two? What's the difference in provision and obedience and walking in purpose? Well, provision and obedience, we were really having a solid focus and found it's a foundational focus, but we focus mainly on provision. We focus mainly on just studying and hammering down and receiving the revelation of receiving the provision of God. But in walking in purpose, we're really focusing on the undergirding truths that allow us to actually walk out our purpose. I'm talking about the how-tos, and not just the how-tos, because everybody's purpose is different. The calls of God are different for different people. But when it comes to walking it out, there are certain undergirding truths, or there's truths that lay this foundation for us to be able to walk out our purpose. And one of these we mentioned last night as we were in our divine purpose curriculum, we were talking about uh, divine purpose. We were talking about our purpose in God. And I had read this verse and said that you need this as an undergirding truth to be able to walk out your purpose. And what this deals with is this deals with God's counsel or the eternal counsel of God. However you want to say it, we're talking about what God has ordained. So what we're going to do is we're going to read through Isaiah 46. We're going to read through Isaiah 46, and then I'm at the end, I'm going to give some context, and we're going to go back into a few of these verses and really take some time today to just look and focus on the truths that allow us to have undergirded foundation for walking out in obedience and walking in our purpose. Isaiah 46. Let's just read through all of it and then we'll go back through it again. So starting in verse 1. Bel bowed down. Nebo stupeth. Their idols were upon the beast and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy loaden. They are a burden to the weary beast. They stoop. They bow down together. They could not deliver the burden but themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age I am he, and even the poor hairs will I carry you. I have made, and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. To whom will ye liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance. 
and hire a goldsmith and make it it a god. They fall down, yea, they worship. They bear him upon the shoulder. They carry him and set him in his place. And he standeth. From his place shall he not remove. Yea, one shall cry unto him. Yet can he not answer nor save him out of his trouble. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the men that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass, I have purposed it, I will also do it. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. I will, I bring near my righteousness, it shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry, and I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Now you might say, Cody, how does Isaiah 46 have anything to do with the life of Elijah? Well, it, it applies in a couple different ways. And really, what we're focusing on is not the contextual aspect of what's going on in the story, but the undergirding truth of the story. But for sake of making sure that you have full understanding of what's going on, I'm going to give some context to Isaiah and what Isaiah prophesied. So Isaiah prophesied in the same time frame as Hosea. So Hosea and Isaiah prophesied in the, in the same time. If you don't know anything about Hosea, I taught all 14 chapters of the book of Hosea. We taught many, many lessons on the book of Hosea. Hosea is one of the most amazing books in the Bible. It's probably one of my favorite books in the Bible. Because Hosea lays this one undergirding foundational truth. That God has a plan of restor restoration and reconciliation in his heart for a people that will repent and turn back to him. It's an amazing truth out of the book of Hosea. And Hosea is directly connected to Revelation chapter 2, the church of Thyatira, and also Revelation chapter 17 and 18, the harlot Babylon. So Isaiah and Hosea prophesied in the same time frame, talking about two different events that happened. In 721, where the northern kingdom of Israel went into captivity into Assyria, and then in 586, when the southern kingdom went into captivity into Babylon. So you have two different kingdoms and uh, the, the, the nation of Israel after the Civil War had two different captivities or where they were taken away in two different ways. So you have two different people carried away in two different ways. Now, the main part about what we're looking at here in Isaiah is Isaiah is talking about some things dealing with Babylon. He's talking about things dealing with Babylon. So when it talks about Bel and Nebo, it is not talking about Baal, who is the, the demon worship that was going on with Elijah. Because Ahab had reared up a temple to Baal. That is not the same as Baal here in Isaiah 46. So we're talking about two different things. Two different things. Contextually two different things. But undergirding truth, the principles that underlay them are the exact same. And that's what I want to talk about today. Because Elijah, when he was walking out his purpose, still had to operate in obedience. In verse 10, it says he went. He, he, he went and did these things. He went to the brook chariot. He went to Zarephath. He walked in a spirit of obedience to the Lord, but he went and did these things. So what I want to look at is not the contextual aspect of what's going on with Babylon and all the things here, but I just want to read some of these undergirding truths that will allow you to walk in your purpose. The first part 
is I want you to see in verses 3 and verses 4 is it says, Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb, and even to your old age I am he, and even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. So the first thing I want you to know is that God from the womb as you are until your old age, so across your entire life, is intricately connected in carrying you, delivering you, and allowing you, and helping you, and equipping you when walking in purpose. The very first truth that you need to know if you're going to walk in your purpose before we really get into the counsel of God is the fact that God is a part of the process. God is not distant from you. God has not abandoned you. God has not put you on the back burner. And the counsel of God, and we're going to look at this. I'm going to go ahead and just tell you what it is. The counsel of God deals with God's plan. Deals with God's purpose on the earth. So when we talk about the eternal counsel of the Godhead, are we talking about God's counsel here today? What we're talking about is God's plan and God's purpose on the earth. And seeing God's purpose come to pass in your life, what God made you for and walking out that purpose, you need to know that God's connected with you even into your old age. God said, I know you as the whore hairs. He said, I'm going to carry you. I'm directly connected to you. This is an amazing truth that you don't need to ever forget when walking in your purpose. And seeing the counsel of God come to pass in your life or the plan of God, the purpose of God in your life come to pass, is that God is with you the entire way, from the womb until the old age. Until you die and go to be with the Lord, God is with you the entire way. And even after you die, He's still with you because you end up in the presence of God. So the thing is, God is never without you. Or let us say it better than that. You are never without God. And we see the rebuke that comes against from Isaiah to the people because they are basically worshiping gods of gold they're worshiping money and things like that like i said we're not going to talk about that today but god calls them to repentance and when he calls them to repentance he uses a couple truths let's start in verse 9 remember the former things of old for i am god and there is none else i am god and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will bring it to pass, I have purposed it, I will also do it. So just these three verses right here show a couple things. One, God knows the end from the beginning and there is none like him. He is the only one and he is the one that declares the end from the beginning. That when you are called to walk in your purpose, God knows the end the old age from the beginning the womb so god knows the entire purpose and plan of your life and is directly connected with you through the entire thing this is an important part when walking out your purpose you need to know in the counsel of god or in god's counsel and god's plan god knows the end god knows where you will end up if you walk in obedience and this is important because when it talks about a ravenous bird, what it's saying is the birds that cross, the birds that migrate and go to different places to receive provision, the, as a bird would be called from the east to move, same with you. God uses this comparison to say, I have called you to execute my plan and purpose. He said, and if you will obey as the bird, as I've called the bird from the east to go, if you will accept the call and go and walk in the purpose that God has ordained for your life, God said, I will do it. I will bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will do it. Now, this is an important point because so many times when people start to walk in their purpose and they look at the counsel of God, they see God call them. They see, they see the purpose of their life come up. God speaks it to them. 
But then as they start to walk in their purpose, they don't know if God's still in the process with them. They don't know if God's still connected with them. God, are you still there? Have you placed me on the back burner? Did you forget about me? It feels like I'm out here alone. And what you need to know, these undergirding truths when walking out your purpose, is God says, I know the old age, I know the womb, I know all the in-between, and I'm with you through the process so you don't have to be afraid. You're not alone. You don't have to quit because you think I'm not there. I'm there with you through the process. And if as the birds, as the birds go, if you will go as they go, they hear the word of God, they hear God say go, and they obey. The same thing with us. We hear God's counsel or God's plan and purpose over our life, and he says go, and we go. The same way he told Elijah, go to the brook, go to Zarephath, and Elijah went. This is an important thing. If you agree with God and you go and you do what God's purpose of your life is, if you walk in your purpose, God said, I will do it. I know the end from the beginning and my counsel will stand. There is nothing in this earth that will hinder my purposes from coming to pass in your life if you say yes. If you say yes, if you obey, and if you walk it out. If you never quit. I, rem I, I still love the phrase by Dr. Summerall that Dr. Summerall said, the only people that lose are the people that quit, so don't quit. If you just keep walking this out with God, you will see it come to pass. Let's read these last couple verses, and then we're going to tie this whole thing together. It says, Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. I will, he says, I bring near my righteousness, it shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. That word stout-hearted means valiant. It's talking about mighty men. God is calling out. He says, listen to me, you mighty men. Besides the fact it says they're far from righteousness, which is reason why this call is coming forth, it's undergirding you. It's saying, I knew you in the womb. I knew you in your old age. I declared the end from the beginning. I'm a part of this the whole way. My counsel will come to pass if you line up and agree with it. If you go when I say go, he said, I will make it happen. But he calls them mighty men. Even in their rebellion, it says they're far from righteousness, but God still calls them stout hearted. He calls them mighty, valiant men. This is important to know. Because God says the righteousness, he's going to bring it near. He's going to bring salvation to you. The deliverance of your soul and the deliverance of the nation of Israel. And he's going to place it in Zion. For Israel, my glory. He's going to bring salvation to you. Redemption. The thing that I want to tell you today is the counsel of God will stand forever. God's counsel, God's plan, God's purpose over your life will stand. But for one reason the one reason god says i'll do it he knows the end from the beginning he says i knew you in the womb i knew you in your old age all of these truths are powerful and these apply to the life of elijah also these are your undergirding truths but i see one very important thing that i need you to listen to me today and hear me say when it says ye stout-hearted that are far from righteousness God is talking about a valiant and a mighty man, a mighty people, but they're far. And God is calling them back to see his counsel, to receive these truths, and then to walk in it in obedience. To walk out their purpose that God has ordained from the beginning. He declared the end from the beginning. So when they start doing this, where they're at now, God still has an end goal and plan of salvation for their life and for the nation. 
the same for your life. But the point you need to know is it requires an aspect of cooperation or obedience. God is calling you to see these truths and then to walk them out in your life. It's not just provision and obedience. It requires obedience. It requires you walking in your purpose. But I love how when God calls somebody to do it and he calls you a mighty person or a mighty man, a mighty woman to walk this thing out, he uses foundational truths of I know you, I'm with you, I've declared you're in, I will make my purpose come to pass in your life. All it requires is you to walk it out to agree with it, to surrender your will and let the will of God be done in your life, to no longer hold control of yourself, but to give it to God and let God bring his purpose over your life come to pass. We're out of time today, but I just want to encourage you that the plan of God will not be thwarted. God's counsel will come to pass in your life if you will walk in it, agree with it, and let God do what he wants to in your life. Let me bless you. Father, I thank you. Bless everybody under the sound of my voice. I give you all the glory for everything you're doing in our lives and through this ministry. I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Church, I love you. I pray you have a wonderful day. We will see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for our daily teaching. And if you are a part of our End Times curriculum, we have class tomorrow night at 7 p.m. So please make sure you have your homework done and you are ready to go for class tomorrow. If you're a part of our other classes, make sure you've watched. Make sure you send in your questions. And we will see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. And I will see you tomorrow. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow. Oh, the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons. The drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good care of me. And you know what I need before I even ask the thing. And you hold me in your hands with the kindness that never ends. And carry The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. Carry